three division and bin picking. Yes, today's uh, topic, as you already stated, and uh, well, what's the meaning of bin picking? You might ask. And if you go to the all-knowing internet and check for what bin picking is and have a look at Wikipedia, the it says that the goal is to have a robot that can, that can pick up um known objects with random poses out of a bin using a suction gripper, parallel gripper, or other kind of robot end effector. Which is actually true, but only partly true. Bin picking is a little bit more than that, but this is the typical application uh, you might consider when we talk about bin picking. And <clears throat> Actually, there are a, quite a lot of solutions on the market. This is a, just a short view of it for that. Dedicated camera solutions, which all have been applied with KUKA and can be used together with a KUKA system. But uh, before we dive into this application, let's have a little bit closer look to what the challenges in terms of bin picking actually are. Uh, and bin picking is actually a small process where you have to look at it basically in three uh, steps. And before we do that, as you probably already mentioned, we need to give our robot a stereo eyesight and make it considerably more intelligent than it is in its own. And that is exactly what we have done by applying a 3D vision system to it with intelligence, with software to handle your bin picking applications. And I mentioned already that um, there are a lot of solutions, and one of the solutions on the market is a, cas a company called Roboception, which comes out of Munich. And today's webinar, I will focus a little bit on their solutions because Roboception is the one software and the one solution that has a really tight integration with Cookie. All the others we briefly showed so before it can be used together with KUKA. There are applications, it's good knowledge of them, but Roboception Solutions has the tightest uh, integration with the KUKA system. For example, it uh, connects with our perception tech uh, software. That means that we can actually get a user interface for the 3D bin picking system directly on our smart pad. Which, of course, in the day to day operation is a huge benefit. So, going back to the challenges of uh, the bin picking applications and the three steps of it, usually we talk about the starting point as the first step. And when we talk about components that are delivered in bins, we usually say that they, are, they can be delivered in bins in three different ways. Either they are neatly structured, that means placed uh, in a very predictable and certain way. We sometimes also call, call it a semi-structured, where they are typically oriented in one direction, but then randomly spread out. And finally, and here I've made a mistake in my PowerPoint, it should say randomly distributed, where all the items are basically thrown into a bin and we need to find them and pick them there. And each one of these cases, of course, have its own challenges and its own applications. The next step of a bin picking process. It's the tasks we need to perform to be able to uh, bin pick them. 
So we need to, first of all, recognize the parts that are in the box and what orientation they do have. We need to know how to grip it and have a look at how the part lies. How can we grip it in this case? And of course, the next step of that is the motion planning. How can we move or how do we need to move the robot uh, to be able to grip it? Now, of course, once we've gripped the object in question, we also need to deliver it to wherever it's going. That means that we, again, need to keep an eye on the orientation of the object. We need to accurately place it if we are going to place our objects in a fixture or in a machine of some kind. We probably need quite high precision in how we are gripping it. So we need to have a high accuracy in the system. And of course, today, there's usually a demand of very short cycle time or high productivity. So we also need to do this in a very short cycle, with a very short and optimized cycle time. So to do this, KUKA and Roboception has built up a modular system. And the modules consist of, first of all, the hardware, the camera system in itself, where we have a stereo camera system. And actually, as you see in the picture here, there are four different camera systems available right now. Two smaller ones, which are suitable to place directly on the robot arm. And two larger ones that are uh, more suited to fixed installations. And all these cameras have their own intelligence. That means that they do the picture evaluation in their own. They can be regarded as a smart camera in every view. So just to keep your interest up, I will show you a very short video. That was a short video showing how the what the camera actually sees in the 3D environment. You probably saw the robot and the camera in itself. And on the right side of the video, there was a, a pane which displayed the views of the 3D camera. Uh, this camera is quite simple to install and set up. We will show that a little bit later. But the camera, of course, and the computer is depending on the software. And also the software is a module-based system. That means that we, we and Roboception particularly have spent a lot of time to make the software easy to use. It's a very intuitive software and you don't need to have it installed on your computer. It's web-based, so you basically just use any um, type Microsoft Edge or something like that to go online to the camera and get access to the software environment there. And all the different modules for the different tasks are ha handled the same way. There is even a e-learning or tryout functionality within the software, so we can try and play with it. Now, if you look at the picture on the right side here, you see in this case, the, ro the camera system is not mount mounted on the robot arm, but is fixed installed in it. So the camera system allows for both installations. And of course, there is one benefit when mounting the camera fixed over the application. And that means that 
we will reduce the total cycle time. Since the camera can do the 3D evaluation while the robot is away doing some other tasks. So that the robot knows where to pick the next object when it get, comes back to the BIM. It is a little bit more uh, consuming of place and a bit larger installation. But at the end of the day, you will have a bit shorter cycle time in your application. But both uh, applications or installations are quite possible to do with these cameras. If we look a little bit into the different software modules of Roboception, uh, the first one is what we call Silhouette Match. It's typically for grasping more or less flat objects lying in planes. That can be planes stacked on top of each other, but still more or less 2D, 2D recognitions. And what they actually do is that they match to a taught template. So we teach the vision system what shapes to look for, search for in the picture, and then determine the position and orientation of the object. And we can also <clears throat> define what grasp points are allowed in this system. This is typically used uh, in machine tending or emptying or loading various type of carriers but will actually replace the need for a pallet uh, system, for example. And of course, as I already mentioned, these objects can be in a bin or a, on a table like the picture here, and they can also be in several layers. The next uh, software module I'm going to talk shortly about is what we call the box pick, which is typically a depalletizing application. That means that when we have a pallet with goods coming in with an unknown pal uh, palletizing pattern, this system is perfect to doing the depalletizing. It will look for flat rectangular surfaces identify the size and position of these rectangular objects, even if they are mixed, and then pick them out of the pallet and place them, for as in this example, for a conveyor belt for further uh, handling. And it will also not only detect the boxes itself, it will also detect the load carrier. The third software module we talk about is what we call CAD Match, which is an artificial based software for random bin picking. Typically, where we have parts in a bin randomly spread out. Here, we actually improve the performance of the camera by using a dedicated PC for this. And the working principle is that we teach the system what shapes to look for. And this can be done either by teaching it in the real life, excuse me, but we can also use a step file, a CAD file, to teach the system what kind of shapes we are looking for. And again, we need to teach the system where and how to grab, grasp the object. And we can then apply some AE-based training, a machine learning cycle, so that the system continuously improves itself here. But this requires some additional hardware in form of an external PC, which we call an RC cube, which fits into the system uh, as a plug and play unit. The fourth 
application is actually a, what we call item pick, where we typically have suction grippers. We can use our system to recognize the, in this case, tomatoes, and decide where we can pick these. In these objects, we probably have several possible grasping points. And this software actually then computes the surface grasp poses and applies them to the robots and generates the path required for the robot to go and pick them up automatically. So I've already mentioned the RS cube. There are a few access accessories. Uh, available to the system. So, so first of all, we have a random dot pattern projector, which is sometimes required depending on the surface structure of the object we're looking at and so on. This projector will create a random pattern, uh, light pattern, dot pattern on the uh, objects it's uh, looking at. Therefore, making it faster and easier for the 3D system to actually find the height and the surfaces we're looking for. So it's a way of amplifying the 3D vision. And then of course we have the RS cube, which I've already mentioned, which is an accelerator for the vision system. So it increases the performance and it's useful when we do have a need for very high speed, like short cycle times, or when we do CAD matching, for example, then it's always required. Uh, so basically, I talked a little bit about the user friendliness of the system. It is a plug and play machine vision solution. And just to emphasize this, I will show you yet another video of how the, the camera system is installed and set up. So what we saw there was the unboxing video of the camera system itself. But as you saw, what they did was they put power to it, connected through ethernet, downloaded some softwares, and they were up and running, creating the first 3D visions quite quickly. 
of course, our software is an open source software, so it is open for connecting to your, if you have dedicated applications. So there's an API available for those of you who wants to connect to it directly. So sometimes quest, uh, customers tell us, why should I use a three division of bin picking? They are compare, they, we find them expensive. And compared to a standard two division solutions, yes, they are costly. But if we consider what we should compare them with, which is typical material handling solutions, such as any type of feeders, a 3D bin picking solution is flexible and space saving. And if you compare it to a feeder solution, it's really not that expensive. Uh, quite the contrary, it's quite inexpensive actually. And since it's that flexible, so it can pick up the items directly from any type of bin, basically, or a pallet, it will actually also free up a lot of manpower. For you because any should we say classical feeder system usually requires an operator that comes to and refills the bin that means that beside of placing a pallet in place there's some heavy lifting or something like that engaged as well so compared to this bin picking solutions are both cost efficient and perhaps in some cases also more importantly uh, space saving. I have one more video to show you. I hope you see the video in the screen here, uh, and it works quite good for you. It's a real life application from one that one of our system integrators in Denmark has used. And here they have used the software module Silhouette Match because they are picking reasonably flat objects out of a pallet. And in the pallet here, the objects are placed in several layers. So it will also pick up layer per layer, actually, using the random dot to, to create a better surface to find here. In this application, they have saved quite a lot of money, but because traditionally these objects came into a machine in pallets, or as uh, QRS calls them here, specialized grid plates. And as they had a lot of product variants, they also uh, had a need for a large number of these specialized grid plates. And in this application with the 3D bin picking, they have excluded the need of this uh, 3D pallets, the pal need of any pallets at all. Uh, with that, I'd ask one last question to myself. Can our bin pecking system handle any shape with these? And to say, yes, there would be a lie, of course. The simple truth is that different each different shape presents different challenges in every case. Uh, and of course, if we're using the functionality of CAD matching, where we use a step file and then search for this shape in real life, it is of course imperative that the shapes in the real life are reasonably alike. Uh, the shape of the CAD file. Therefore, if you're considering bin picking or interested in bin picking, we suggest that you contact, contact us at KUKA or Robception directly. And together with you, we will have a look at your need. We will do some trials together with you, and we will find a perfect solution for your application. With that said, we are coming to an end of the webinar. I see I got a few questions, so let's run through them and see. Uh, and I'll start with Brian, who asks about the examples that I've shown here today. 
he says that the items are at a constant position. And I think he means a constant height because they were laying on a table and so on. And he asks, can the system from a fixed position see into a Euro pallet and also the different depths of it? And the simple answer of that, and I think you saw that on the video from the QRS application, that yes, it can. So it can pick out different layers of objects in, in your palette. Lars Knudsen, he asks if uh, we have to be online with Robception to set up the image and adjust the focus. I'm actually not 100% sure, but I believe you have to be, but I will double check it and come back to you. Then we got a question, what the acquisition time in average for a bulk pieces uh, package are. And there is no quick answer to that because that depends a bit on the shapes in question and the object surface structures a bit as well. But usually it's actually an irrelevant question because if you place the camera statically mounted over the bin you're picking from, the processing time of the camera picture is much less than the time the robot spends away for placing the object it's picked priorly. So if you fix your camera statically, when the robot returns to pick the next object, it will have the next position from the camera system. And therefore the that cycle time of the camera system won't affect the total cycle time of the robot. So again, we have to look at your application, how to keep it optimized. But the cycle time in this case is much less than what the robot needs to place the object somewhere else. Uh, Lars also asks the process time to generate the 3D image with com CAD comparison. And that's basically the same answer that I gave right now. And Dennis clarified, detection time depends on where you calculate the grasp points and on the used software, which is Dennis from Roboception has filled in here for us. But typically, again, if the camera is static, you can do the processes in parallel. Uh, John asks, in case of a random placed items in the bin, do you apply further software steps after the Roboception pipeline? I'm not really sure what you mean with that question. I'm sorry, could you clarify that a bit? And Emilia asks, how do we prevent light disturbances from surrounding environment? And obviously, Emilio has quite a lot of experience with vision systems because you probably all know that vision systems typically are, and more specifically 2D vision systems, are quite light sensitive. And actually a 3D system like this, which uses two cameras at two different angles, is actually less uh, disturbed by the light, the surrounding light. So from that aspect, the 3D system is significantly more stable and less sensitive to surrounding light reflections and so on. Uh, Brian asks if it's fault free. That's a pretty wide question. Uh, I wouldn't guarantee it, of course, but again, it's dramatically less sensitive than a classical 2D system. So that's the question so far. Again, I would like, if you have and are thinking about looking into 3D bin picking, Oh, I got, in the video with chip scans, the robot change its position to scan scene from different directions. Static camera set up scene from one direction. Does it influence the picking on picking accuracy? Yes, of course it does. Again, depends on the application and the objects. 
that is what I mean, that when you have a bin packing solution, contact us directly and we will, together with you, look at what the necessary steps are. As in any application, there's a little bit of experience required before you get good at it. And the experience is not on the software side, but in the application side, of course. Now, if there are any more questions, or if you've missed something, during the next week, this webinar will be uploaded on our KUKA Nordic YouTube channel. And there you'll find all our other webinars we've been doing the past year. We have some educational videos there as well, and some other more amusing stuff. Have a look at Andreas and his unpacking video of our Ion Tech video, for example. And of course, if there are no more questions right now, you probably come up with your question in a short while or in a couple of days. Please feel free to contact me directly or any other of your KUKA uh, contacts, and we will make sure that you get an answer as quickly as possible. Industrial Intelligence.